They said it couldn't be done. They said it wouldn't last. White man, black man. America F1. America F1 coming to you straight from San Francisco, California. Sherman Tillman, Michael Lawler. America F1. Look at that view. We're <laughs> back, baby. Happy New Year out there. 2024. Happy New Year to everyone. We're back for another great season of America F1. This is our third season. We started two thirds away down the pike two years ago. Two years ago? No, is it two years? Yeah, two, two seasons ago. Two seasons ago. But we didn't start in the beginning of that season. Mm-hmm. We started, like, I think near uh, the Circuit of Americas. That was our first uh, video. Didn't you go to that race? I did. Mm. But I, and I think we did a show right after. Either Did we do it before or after? I think we did it before. Mm. Uh, two years. Yeah. So, so this is our second full season. This is our second full season. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'd like to make my predictions. Um, okay. The Red Bull is going to win every race. <laughs> Come on. Not again with that. Um, I said yeah. they were going to win every race they, last year and they, 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 they did by, by one, one. By, yeah. one. Yeah. by one. And yeah. it was because of Singapore and they couldn't get their car hooked up. Well, while we know there's no race going on, they haven't even released the cars yet. What we're doing is since... It's a new season. We want we want to do a tribute. Uh, what we're doing is all the world champions. We're gonna end up having a show about every world champion, and I thought that was a great idea because every world champion deserves their own show. So today we're gonna start our show off or our new season off with Mika Hakkinen. Mika was a two-time world champion. He raced from 1991 to 2001. And he won the world championship in 1998 and 1999. And, and came he, in second, 2000 and 2001. And he was the only guy to really put it to Schumacher at the height of A Schumacher's Schumacher, power. Yeah, it was like, right? Even when he won those two championships, Schumacher finished second in the points. So it was like, it was a battle to the last race. So, except the McLarens, the 98 and the 99 car were the first. Uh, Adrian Newey cars when he because he moved from Williams to uh, McLaren because uh, he was supposed to have be part owner of the team and Frank and uh, really? <laughs> they just made decisions without him. Oh man. man! Like when they fired Damon Hill the year he won the championship, they fired him halfway through the season. Then he wins the championship and and he was just so so enraged by that. He's like, I'm leaving. I'm just and he went to McLaren and those were his first two cars at McLaren. Wow. And they just were a dom. I was a, the ninety eight was a dominant car, and the ninety nine car was even more dominant. It but, shows you that Adrian Newey. While we're getting off on a tangent, because you brought his name up, I didn't even know they actually asked him to design part of the space program. Yeah, he he designed a sailboat a few years ago and the hypercar for Aston Martin. So I mean, the guy's just talented. Oh yeah, he went to the school of um, like the famous architectural school in England. Mm. And I think his thesis was about the ground effects cars. That's why his car is so good right now. <laughs> it's so unfair. Maybe they should ban Adrian Newey. Adrian Newey should be banned. No. <laughs> Adrian Newey <laughs> should have to go from one team. Each team gets him for a year. <laughs> he should. I mean, he's like the ultimate free agent. Like, okay, you're in last place. We'll pay Adrian Newey. We'll let him go to your team. And we'll see what he can do. Okay, you know? that's that's not fair because Adrian Newey <laughs> hasn't won every championship every year. His all of his cars haven't been. Well, it's always when it's the ground effect type of. Car. Well, no, his car his, that car in the late '90s was not ground effects. He got his degree in the early '80s. Remember, they banned the ground effects cars, so he just did a thesis on ground effects. That's all. I mean, Lewis Hamilton said that in an interview. He's like, well, "What did you think was going to happen?" <laughs> right. Know? Well, they got another bar at this hotel. Can you believe that? That's three. Mike, Mike's off on a segue. He's going to Bangkok. Bye-bye. So he's really, I might never come back. really excited about <laughs> it. So while we're doing the show, we're actually watching his hotel in the background. There's but a- before we get into Mika Hakkinen and really dive into how great he was and what a great uh, champion he was, but not only that, he's a great ambassador for the sport. 
you can he still talks about and gets interviewed uh, regularly by all the pundits. And he goes to a lot of races. And he races. goes to a lot of the races. So he's still out there. Uh, we wanted to get to some of the breaking news that is around F1. You, we got Gunther Steiner's firing. Gunther Steiner. Gun, Gunther Steiner's firing. We got Total Wolf's new contract. And McLaren came out with the livery that looks the same. Livery. Last year. It's not lively. It's livery. 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 You said lively. Uh, isn't that an actress? Anyway. Anyway, talk about Gunther. God, that's just bizarre that they just out of nowhere fired. You know, but he's going to go someplace. There's already rumors of him going to Alpine. So he should go some. I mean, <clears> he's he, going someplace. He's going to go somewhere. He doesn't have to though, because he's been in the sport for forever. Because he was when Red Bull started. The first year he was the technical director, and then the next year they got Adrian Newey, and guess what? <laughs> he ended up on the street. I read a tweet from Gunther that he didn't know he was fired. No one had contacted him. No, he got a phone call. That's how this. That's how these things. Happen. But that, I'm just saying, he said, he said, "Oh, this is news to me." It's on, it's on a tweet. Go look it up. Okay, so he he could he could have lied, but what did what did he not get a. a from what I hear, he wanted part of the team he wanted, revenue. He wanted to be one of the owners, and, yeah. and and he doesn't put any money into the team. Why would he give? Well, because he said because of his heightened um, personality and his heightened awareness that people know who he is because of Drive to Survive, and that brought more revenue to the team, and that brought more eyes to the team. So because of that, he should get paid. He, Gene Haas supposedly gives $100 million a year to the Haas team. That's the no one knows, but he gives a hundred million dollars a year to that team. But the yeah. cap is one thirty five. Yeah, but this year he, they had a sponsor too, so I don't know how much money he put in this year because they have a money gram as their as the new. Yeah, we don't sponsor. know how much money they even paid though. I mean, but do you think they're definitely not putting in the money that for? I mean, they're not no, right at the cap like Ferrari, nobody Mercedes, is. and nobody, Red Bull, right? Nobody, nobody really is. I because one hundred thirty-five million dollars is like a still it's a lot of goddamn money you have to just chuck at something. But but if you're running a team, but the other win. teams that like the teams like Mercedes and and Ferrari and McLaren and Red Bull, they all have killer sponsors. You know, they're like they who knows how much money Patronus gives to Mercedes every year. Because you know Mercedes doesn't eat the whole cost of the team. They, oh, no. Not at so, all. Not even close. I think somebody said a couple years ago in one of the championship seasons that, that Mercedes might have paid 14 or $15 million that year. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, And you know Patronus is probably kicking. Oh, and the Oracle deal that Red Bull signed, they signed a five-year, $500 million to put Oracle on the side pods of the, uh, of the um, hmm. Red Bull. That's, that's a lot of money. Well, Toto got a new contract. Well-deserved, I would think. Yeah, I mean, you got to have continuity. His, and that's his the cars difference. have sucked the last two years. but well, I'm, His car sucks, and he still gets second and third place, right? He got second last yeah. year. year before that, he got third. But it wasn't much of not, a it – was, it, it wasn't a competitive car. It was like it had – it was extremely difficult to set up. That's what Lewis said all the time. Remember him crying on the radio and told, us, told him to shut up but, and drive But don't car? you think that shows how good Mercedes has been? Well, they, they can have, their, have a shitty car. I, I think and their still engines finish second in the. I think their engine's still the best, but I, but the Red Bull is so much faster than every, everything. It's just it's just crazy, how fast that car was this year. Maka's new library looks like uh, livery. Sorry, livery, livery. The, uh, I get it. I get it. Livery. Okay. <laughs> livery. Okay. The Sherman has a problem with pronunciation, like for stepping. Yeah. Um. What do you think of their new livery? My, looks the same as last year's. That's what I said. Well, I, I, I like that well, car. I don't get it. Well, when they first put it on TV and it was the orange, I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then, right. they, and then, and then they showed you what the real livery is going to be, and so, it was like, what? Because that's what the sponsors want, and supposedly they're not a well-funded team right now. I say you're better off with having fan design. In fact, somebody bought McLaren recently, like bought a majority stake in that team. I think you somebody, have a contest with the fans, and you let the best. Fan design win. I think that's what, <laughs> no seriously. It's way more imaginative than what the crap they've been putting out lately. Well, I hope the Ferrari this year as a shiny. Well, it's gonna red. be red. No, it's gonna be red. But <laughs> I wanted to be. be red. I was watching the 2017 race and the car was like 
uh, had a gloss coat to it instead of the, the matte that they've been doing the last couple of years. And it looks so much better. You gloss can, is better. Oh, yeah. They should make them. They, they, they do that better. because it's supposedly it's a weight-saving thing. Really? <clears throat> yeah, because everyone's... Their cars are heavy now because they're so goddamn big. And when they go to the 20, 2026 rules, the cars hopefully will be smaller like they used to be. Because they don't need to be this big. They look on, they're look they almost as big as an Indy car now. Well, let's talk about... Let's get into Mika Hakkinen. Mika Hakkinen. 20 wins in his career. Yeah, but he only he only raced... He was only in a competitive car for like three years. So. Well, he was in he was in Formula One for ten years. Yeah, he had fifty one podiums, twenty six poles. That's not bad. Not bad. Fifteen fastest laps. Well, the first the first five years he was in Formula One, he did, he was with the Lotus team for two years, mm-hmm. and then that team it stopped in ninety four, I believe. Then he went to McLaren, and McLaren wasn't any good. Ninety four, ninety five, ninety six. They got a little better in 97 because that's when Adrian came on board, mm-hmm. but it wasn't his car yet. But when they got to the 98 season, it was like they, everyone knew in preseason testing they were the car to beat. Well, let's set the grid and let you guys out there, our audience, know who Mika was racing against. Like, what was the grid like? Like, who was on that grid? Was it really competitive? Here we go. In 98, here's your grid. You got Mika Hakkinen won the championship. No, I you had Michael Schumacher day, driving <laughs> for Ferrari. <laughs> David Coulthard <laughs> was driving in the other McLaren. Okay. You had Eddie Irvine <laughs> in the it, other Ferrari. You had Eddie, Jacques <laughs> Villeneuve. 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 In the, in the Williams. He was in the Williams. That was the year they, they, they lost their engine. Renault stepped out of Formula One and they didn't have... They didn't get a new engine that year, and they had to use the year before engine, which was down on horsepower, and they never won a race. You had world champion Damon Hill. Well, you didn't say Villeneuve was a world champion. So Schumacher was a world champion. Uh, Villeneuve Villeneuve was a world champion. Damon Hill was a world champion. Guess who came in second in 97? Uh, Damon Hill? Schumacher. Schumacher. Okay, so Damon Hill drove for Jordan, Uh which was... uh, he yeah, actually won a couple races. It was with. actually part of Honda, I guess, huh? They Jordan, were Mugen Honda. And Mugen then, they were, Honda. then they had the Works Honda engine. And then they, for some reason, they didn't let um, that team keep the the Honda engine, which was never that great of an engine, anyways. Well, here's a guy I haven't heard name in a long time. Heinz Franzen. Heinz Harold Franzen. Yeah, he, he drove was another for, uh, Williams. He was pretty good. Yeah, Alexander. Wolfs? Wurtz. Wurtz. He uh, drove for a Benetton. Benetton, which is now the Renault team. Uh, yeah. The Alpine team. Giancarlo Fischella. Giancarlo Fischella. Yeah, for a Benetton. Yep. Yeah, Rafe Schumacher. Ralph. Rafe? R-A-L-F. Rafe. Ralph. How come, I, Ralph. how come people say Rafe? It's Ralph. No one calls him Rafe. I just did. And there's a rumor going around that uh, Ralph Schumacher's gay. So, but you What, what does that got to do with anything? I just... Do it out there. Someone told yeah, me who that. Who cares? Jordan and he 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 drove for Jordan. Uh-huh. You got John Alesi, who I like. I like John Alesi. He's. I French. like him because he had the car, one of the cars that I really love. That that I think he drove that yellow and green one, right? He what drove the yellow and green, the, the Sauber. At one point, Sauber at one point, didn't he you. drive it? I, I remember him in a yellow. When I hear that name, I remember yellow and green for some reason. I'm pretty sure he had a. Well, he got he he got stuck in the uh, the Ferrari right before Michael got there, and the the cars weren't very good. So he won one race. He won uh, uh, his whole career. He won one race, and he won the '95, I think, Canadian Grand Prix, and possibly the most beautiful race car ever, which was the '95 Ferrari. Just beautiful car. You had the Rubens Barrichello. For Stuart Ford. Yep. <laughs> Selling uh, trucks and camper shells. No, no, no. Stu- <laughs> Stuart Ford was uh, Jackie Stewart's team. for. Th- I think they were around for three years. And then uh, Ford bought the team from them and rebranded it Jaguar. And then now it's the Red Bull team. Okay. So. You had uh, Mika Salo. Mika Salo. He drove for Arrow. Arrows. Pedro Dinez. Denise. He, he drove for Arrows too. Mm-hmm. Johnny Herbert, he drove for Sauber. 
Johnny Herbert drove for Sauber. Yes, okay. Sauber, at least that year he did. Okay. Uh, Juan, John Magnuson. Jan Magnuson. Jan. Jan. Magnuson. Is that Kevin Magnuson's dad? Dad? Yeah. That's what I thought. He, he was, eh, eh, eh. He got that ride in the in in the Stewart car, and he just was. It, it was like him and and uh, Verstappen's dad, and they were just not very good Formula One drivers. They were like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> they were like, all right. And Kevin Magnussen is a very good, competent. I would say he would be if he was in one of the big teams, he would be the number two driver. He's a good but, number two driver. Yeah, like I when, think so. When he came back to Formula One last year after they fired Mazaspin, he. Destroyed <laughs> Mick Schumacher. It wasn't even new. He's like, wasn't he was, even close. He was faster everywhere. Yeah, it's, and then he had year, a bad year last year, though. Yeah, but it's like it's it. The, I, I don't know if that car's any good. It, it was like, remember when I told you when they finished tenth, that was like a win for that yeah. car. Yeah, and they did do that a few times because they have good drivers on that team. They're not great drivers. They're very solid Formula One drivers. Yano Truly was in the. And you uh, said his name right. What the Prost Pujo. Prost. Pugia. Yeah, Alain Prost had a team. Had a team, yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember that. For three that. years, and he supposedly micromanaged it into the ground. <laughs> I could see that happen. That was a well Why can't you drive like me? There was a well... <laughs> yeah, you should never have stars be in charge of shit. Like, like Michael Jordan was not... Michael good. Jordan, not good GM. Not, he not wouldn't have been a good owner. coach. He was like... Because he, he was too good. Patrick Johnson wasn't the great... But like, Larry um, Bird was a good coach. Who? Larry Bird was a he good was coach. He was all right. No, no. He went to some championships. Larry Bird was a, a good coach. But no, um, the baseball player, Williams, Ted Williams, he was the Senators. Um, yeah. Doesn't translate. Why can't you hit like me? He just, he, he could, because he, it was like, it was not a good team and he couldn't get, he just got sick of trying to teach people how to, how to play baseball and they were never going to be anything. So you had uh, Ricardo Rossette. He drove for uh, Terrell Ford. They had two. No, no, that's the Tyrrell. Tyrrell. Ken Tyrrell's team. That's the team Jackie Stewart won his two championships with. I think yeah. he won twice there and he won once at either he was at Brabham or one of the other teams. Oliver Pinas drove also for Prost. Olivier Pennies. I don't even remember him. Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Torasuki uh, Taki. Give me that. Give me the. Give oh me the man, I'm a butcher that one, bro. Which one is it? Tora. Oh, Takagi. Here. Oh, what was his first name? I have no idea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm not even gonna yeah, try. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he he drove for Terrell Ford. Yeah, Shinjay. Shinji Nakano. Uh huh. He he drove for Minardi. Uh. Esteban Turo, he drove for Minardi also. What? He drove for Minardi. Esteban. And then Josh Verstappen. Josh Verstappen, that's... Um, Stuart Ford. That's um, Max's dad. So, here are some of uh, the great quotes that Mika Hakkinen has. His uh, ten great quotes. I race to win. If I am on the bike or in the car, it will always be the same. You have to be very focused on what you want to achieve, and you have to have to be relentless in your pursuit of the goal. Now, these aren't like the greatest quotes in the world. I mean, these are quotes that you could get right out of the Cracker Jack box, actually. A lot of times when people do these quotes, they're just they're they're just trying to fill space when they're doing interviews. You know, like what's yeah. your what's your what's your mission statement? Like, when you're know. racing, it's life. Yeah. Anything that happens before or after is just waiting that's the crap the stupid sports writers yeah. want to do. anyways what's 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 next on your little in formula one the car is the key yep. but the team makes a difference the car and the team are the same, it's the same thing though if you got a good car you're usually going to have a good team so i have always had the hunger to perform that's why i am still here I, i'm waiting for something that's going to be great uh you have to keep your composure and be a professional you have to be thinking driver and be quick at the same time. You have to be positive <laughs> and you have to be a leader. Anything's jumping out of the page here? No. I was always someone who wanted to win. When you drive so fast, things happen very slowly. 
Yeah, you gotta you gotta play them one game at a time, and God willing, we'll we'll get to the championship and be champions. I love the winning. I can take the losing, but most of all, I love to play. Winning in auto racing is very anticlimactic because you when you start, you lose all the time. You never get to win. And then when you win, you're like, what the hell? Ladies is that? and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed Someday an we'll urgent take Sherman up to the track. I don't know how many he has what it takes, but and I need all of you to stop what you're doing. Ladies and gentlemen. So Mika had a great crash in 1995. Uh-huh. I want you to talk about that, Mike. And that's really what kind of well, like turned they, it around for him. Like, well, first was, of all, they thought he was going to die. Right. Um, and, it, but he came back from it. So that was like, it was like a miracle. He drove again. So, you know, you can't get, you, 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 these guys are athletes. And if, if you hurt their noodle and you hit his, they hurt his head. Right. That's like the most important part about a driver that in their ass. That's, the two and for things. a time, he, he didn't know if he wanted to come back. Huh. Why would you? You almost if you, he almost died, like dead. That you're gonna die in a race car? Screw that's the dumbest. That'd be the dumbest decision ever. And then he, for some reason, from what I've heard, I've heard uh, engineer talk about working with him, and then working with Senna. And he said Senna would give you like everything. Like oh, on this turn, the camera's doing this. Uh, I felt this, um, the, you know, I, I, I think we have a little oversteer here. Oh, the steering wheel's giving me this input. You know, the back wheels are doing this. And he said, Mika didn't do any of that. He just did some things with his hands <laughs> and that was it. And you're like, wait, but he never told me anything about the car. He would just point and move his hands a lot and then walk off. Okay. So he wasn't great on giving back the feedback. <clears throat> didn't have to be or maybe the car was always set up pretty good you know you never know i mean and senna might have been one of these people that was just me- super meticulous about every last little thing and schumacher was the same way he wanted to know they said his brain was like a computer he wanted to know where everybody was at all the time they were constantly talking to him on the radio where a lot of these guys are like stop bothering me i know what to do don't bother you're bothering me on the radio schumacher was that one guy who was like he wanted them do you think Mika, while a good driver, do you think he was a circumstance of being in the right place at the right time? Well, you have to be in the right place at the right time, but he is one of the great, he's one of the goats. He's, he took it to Schumacher every year. They were, it was those guys for like five or six years in a row, it was one, two. So. And they always talk about his pass, the one pass that he did. And that was oh, the one that I tried that to that overtake spot. Michael, I think, and three, four times. Every and time he was pushing me the right? on the cross. Yeah. And I knew that that way, next stop, when I tried to overtake Michael again, he's going to push, you know, he's going to block me. I can see there's a back marker driving middle of the track. It was logical to, to Michael to overtake him on the left because the next corner will be turning right. I decided to go, of course, to the other side. A brilliant move there, either side of Zonta, and Hakkinen brilliantly takes the lead of the Belgian Grand Prix. It was quite a risk when we overtook him. He's guaranteed he needed to change his underpants after the race. <laughs> lost the championship in in 2021 everyone blamed it on the on the on the guy michael messi uh, who was the right sporting director well, it was his they fault. blamed it on him well, it's his fault. but if, if you look back at that season hell yeah, he made a bunch of, of mistakes yeah he, he made, made, he made yeah. a lot of mistakes that yeah. year especially baku right. when he could have if he would have came in second in baku just be happy yeah. Which is really it was it, those he, tires. him making that straight. mistake. That was like his, I think his worst mistake. I think I've ever seen that guy do ever, and he never makes mistakes. So, yeah, if it wasn't for that, but you know, we digressed. Of course, uh, here's what some of the other racers had to say about Mika Hakkinen. Michael Schumacher said Mika is a fantastic driver. He's very quick, very consistent, very intelligent. He's a great champion. Mm-hmm. David Coulthard, who was his teammate. Mika was a very tough competitor. He was always very strong mentally and physically. Mm-hmm. Jacques Villeneuve. Villeneuve. Oh, Villeneuve. You have to learn these names. I know the names. I don't know why I'm tongue twisted like that sometimes. Villeneuve. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, shit. Mika was a true sportsman and a tough competitor. He was always fair on the track. Mm-hmm. Damon Hill said Mika was one of the hardest drivers to beat. He was always very calculating and precise in his driving. He didn't make mistakes. That's why Hey, he Fernando Alonso got to drive against him, I guess, huh? Yeah, because oh, Fernando came in in 2001, I think, in the minority, and that was Hawkins last year. Mika was a class act. He was always respectful and true professional. Alan Pross said Mika was a great rival. He pushed me to my limits and made me a better driver. Jensen Button who also got to race against Mika. Mika was an inspiration to many drivers, including myself. He was a role model for dedication and hard work. Mm-hmm. Mika was, Sebastian Vettel said, Mika was a master of his craft. His smooth driving style, mental strength set him apart. Except a couple times he got, he, he did get, at the end, I think he got worked by Schumacher. I don't think he, could, he couldn't take the, the pressure after all those years of them fighting with one another. Because mm-hmm. remember, at the end of the 2001, he... He basically he said he was going on a sabbatical. And never came back, and, right? No. And they wanted him back. They didn't want him to leave. No one wanted him. And he probably got offers from he probably got offers from the Williams team. He probably got offers from Ferrari. And he just wanted to call it a day because I think he got I think he, just he got he, burnt he, out. He, he got he got beat mentally by Schumacher. I always thought that. Huh. Like, like you that can happen to anybody though. I think you know, so. If there's that some great wall that just keeps and you have to, it's kind of like uh, Rosberg, you know, he knew what it took to beat Hamilton finally, and he didn't want to go through it again. Hell no. Why would you? you? Know? Why, why would you want to put, I mean, because uh, I remember Rosberg before he retired, mm-hmm. he always seemed pissed off. Like he was <laughs> he never seemed happy. The second that guy retired, I've never not seen him with a smile on his face yeah, now. So yeah, yeah. He's like, I did this, I did my part, my tour of duty, I'm out. I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah, so I guess that must have happened. Mika was the original Rosberg, you would say? No, no, no. Not- Ros- Rosberg quit because he's like, I don't he didn't want to do it anymore. Mika got was mentally spent. I think that was that's what happened to him because you put so much into a Formula One season. It's like 24 hours a day, seven days a week for however many years you do it for. You're always on the road. You're always traveling. Um, well, he's <clears> the original <throat> flying Finn, right? Well, but I think they, so. They've called the other Finnish drivers. Well, yeah, flying of course, right. And then it's like, but I don't think they called, did they call him? They called him, the, no, they called, uh, um, Kimi was the Iceman. Right. Yeah. But I don't remember them calling him the Flying No, I don't remember him calling him the Flying I think it was just Mika. Just Mika? Yeah. And if there was one thing that you could, memory, that you could pinpoint about Mika, not not a quote or a driving style, just something that really stands out about that era, what would you point to? Well, I remember the the race. he He was just dominating the race at Imola one year. And there used to be a chicane on the front straightaway that they, thank God they took out. Um, and he was all by himself and chucked the car off the track. And he Nobody went, around. Nobody around him. He wasn't really racing with anybody. And he went over on the side of the road and cried. Literally. I seen pictures yeah. of that. that was he's like, like, oh, there's like uh, tires. Yeah. And he's sitting right in front of the tires. And he's just crying. Yes. He, he's mental, I seen that. He mentally, it, it, he just was so, it, the... The, he, the feeling was so overwhelming that he and it was like wow because I, I he always he was sort of like a quiet guy I just mm-hmm. didn't think I would ever see him sitting there crying like that I was just whoa I, he does put a lot into this so that was but that was like and he still won the championship that year so. oh okay now I think I, that I think that's the year he one won. thing uh, I, I was remiss in saying is this was the V10 era oh yeah so V10s open obviously there was no um <laughs> there was refueling mm-hmm. so v10 refueling so it's a total and different they had, the era. Horror, they had those horrible groove tires at the time i never liked them and, and the reason why they said they went to the groove tires is to, to slow, slow the cars down. down and then the cars went faster <laughs> uh, what i love about formula one and i always think it's really funny is they put rules in to do one thing and they do the total opposite. Well, yeah, like when they went to the, when they went to the V8s, they went to the V8s to save money, and the team spent a billion dollars on <laughs> V8 engines. So I mean, it it never seems to fail that they try to put in these rules to do this, and the opposite result 
happens. It's really. I would like I, I keep telling everyone just take away the tires. If they if they just give them like super super soft tires, there'll be like twenty pit stops a race. And anytime you go into the pits, there something is a, can happen. Something can happen. So, the, anyways, anything not, else you got to say about uh, Mika before we? I think show? That he was a total class act. Um, he was, you know, a two time champion. Could have been more time champion if he if he uh, didn't retire. Um, but he's always been a class act, and he's you know a good representative for Formula One. He goes to a lot of the races. He seems way happier now than when he, when he was driving. A lot of these guys, when they're driving, they're, they're like Rosberg, like I put for example, it was like sort of like that. The second he, I hated Mika when he was driving because I was a Schumacher guy. Mm -hmm. But the second he retired, I, all of a sudden a sense of humor kind of popped out, and I was like, oh, okay, I like this guy. It just shows how much goes into it. Yeah, and it takes so much out of you. Yeah, um, I mean Schumacher like cried on I mean, that one time when he was on, on the. Um, the podium at the end when they were doing the press conference and he just starts crying like I'm like I don't I don't remember what triggered it but it's like these guys put so much in into it that's why they I don't think I don't think the next generation I don't see anybody driving into their 40s you know but Alonzo is like the as far as I'm concerned he's the most yeah well, I mean Hamilton's gonna be in his 40s when he's I mean he's I don't think so Hamilton's always said he's not driving into his 40s. But Kimi said the same thing, and he Kimi remember. said the same thing, and there and, he goes, right? And, I think if Hamilton, if he pulls it off this year, which I don't think is going to happen, I, don't think it's I mean gonna the happen. Red Bulls. He's so going to stay. Ahead. He's going to stay till twenty twenty six. I guarantee it, because he wants because that's their that's their probably next chance to have a, a winning car again. So then and he'll be forty. The next two, oh, so yeah, because he's, cause he's thirty eight. Is he thirty eight? Yeah, now? and when the upcoming season, he'll turn thirty nine. Well, it's so. he's still one. I mean, they're the two best drivers right now. Are the three best drivers are Max, Lewis, and Fernando, and then there's the next group of the youngins of Leclerc, um, Russell, who you love, um, Lando. Those those three guys and all. Carlos Sainz. Carlos Sainz is angry. Telling you. I told you Carlos Science last year was <laughs> underrated. I was proven right I, by all the feedback, by all the things he does on track, by all the things he has to deal with, with his st stupid engineer and their stupid, <laughs> oh, but, you should park the car. It's overheating. You don't even listen to him. Yeah. Yeah, that was because he's, he knows better now. Yeah, because he knows, okay, I can't listen to these guys. These guys are... Maybe retarded. I don't know. You should, I know you can't say that. I'm gonna say mentally challenged. Okay. No, but, I like I like retarded. It may have, has much more of a, a definite. Tone yeah, because to it. how many times on the radio are they talking to Carlos and Carlos is like, "No, nah, I'm not doing that." Uh, I mean, <laughs> now, how many times he's right? Pretty much all the time. So you got to put Carlos in that group. Everyone wants to have this group all to themselves, and they forget about Carlos. But Carlos. Didn't make you forget about He's him. He's all right. Sometimes he drives good and sometimes he doesn't. So Smooth. Anyway, the next time we see you, and we want to thank everybody for coming back. You won't see me for in. three weeks. I'm gone. won't see Mike for three weeks, but we're going to do another show on another champion. I guess while he's gone, I could do it by myself. Or I could get PJ on uh, Bluetooth because he doesn't like to show up. For whatever reason, uh, yeah, maybe I could get him on Bluetooth and we can talk. He probably doesn't like you very much. Probably, well, <laughs> or maybe he has a phobia about. I think he might have a phobia about showing up actually, in in person. But we'll, right. we'll do it on Bluetooth and we'll do a contemporary champion, uh, so this uh, new generation can have somebody. I think we should that, do Alonzo next that they can identify with. I would rather wait for you to be do Alonzo. That'd be oh, great. Come back from. Yeah, you'll be gone. We'll, we'll do something while you're gone. Just uh, now that, that the new season started, to keep the, sabotage his whole career. So keep the folks interested. And then next month, I think, is Drive to Survive is coming out. Boring. And then also, did you watch all the all the ones last? Day? I have seen all five seasons. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. And the first <laughs> the first three seasons actually were good. I thought the first three. I seasons tried to watch good. that crap, and it's just—it's uh, such a TV show. It's the not other real. Other two weren't that great. 
<laughs> and they raise the price of the goddamn tickets to go to a form. It's cheaper to go to a Formula One race outside of America than it, it is. is to go here. <laughs> You can go. I wanted to go to the Amsterdam so race last year. It would have been cheaper to go there than to go to Austin. Dude, don't start me. I could have got tickets in in Amsterdam for three hundred bucks for the, for three days. It's insane. I was privileged enough to go to three races last year. All right. Um, I went to Austria. And you I say you want to go back to Japan? To Monza, and I went to the first race in Vegas. And the race in Vegas costs more than <laughs> going to Italy oh costs more than going to Austria. So I won't do it again. I won't I won't pay those fees. I won't pay that much money. I'm not gonna do it. It's just I had to do it for my it was our anniversary and it was my wife's first race. So that's one thing. But it is actually cheaper if you live in America to go to races outside of America. I went it is to, the, to see the race in America. That's I went to sad. the MotoGP race last year. Sad. It was nine hundred dollars to fly to Austin. I'm going to Thailand yeah. on Sunday. It's a thousand dollars to go to Thailand. Yeah, yeah. It's insane. Yeah. It, it, there's no way. They get, something has to happen. Hopefully, when we see, since Las Vegas wasn't sold out, yeah. hopefully they'll have a change and oh. we'll see some different changes as far as the pricing. Because you paid like fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars a ticket. Dude, if I see another year dominated by Max Verstappen, stopping, Verstappen. I, I, I just, just said, said Max grabbed, Verstappen. It's not his name. Verstappen. No, it's Verstappen, not Verstappen. You say Verstappen. That's Verstappen. Thank you. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for <laughs> tuning in on another exciting, titillating America F one. Mike always criticizes my, uh, you know.